You're listening to Business Stories with Ryan Arcarachi, where I speak to business professionals from all walks of life. Thanks for listening, and let's get to it. Hey, listener. It's Ryan again. This is part two of my series on grand opening successes with Mr. John Lee. John, thanks again for being here. You bet. It's great to be with you, Ryan. Yes, it is. So I really appreciate you coming back to do part two. This is part two of three. So make sure if you're listening, you stay tuned as we'll be doing one more final one uh, coming up soon as well. So we talked a lot yesterday, John, about, you know, the pre-planning for the grand opening. We talked about, you know, what you should expect, the time you should invest, the money you should invest. And now we're getting into the logistics of the soft opening, the now open phase. Um, so I guess the, the first question I want to ask you is, and I think listeners want to know, is should the grand opening, and this, and this sounds like a question that would be obvious to me, but I don't think it really is obvious. It's kind of a, a trick question. Should the grand opening be held the first day the business is actually open? In a one word answer, no. Yeah, absolutely not. Now, there are a lot of franchisees that, you know, you start working with them after they've been open for a few months and they've already had their grand opening. Well, when did you have? Oh, we had it the first day we opened. And right. that doesn't work. Here, here's the way we look at it. Strategically, Ryan, strategically, a franchisee has about five small windows with, with this opening, launching, grand opening marketing program, a four-month program. The franchisee has about four or five windows of opportunity to really promote their business. And let's face it, you have to promote your business to get new people in the door, get customers in the door and build sales. So the first window of opportunity uh, we discussed yesterday, the first two windows of opportunity we discussed yesterday, and that is that for the front window, uh, full front window billboard promoting the brand and the, the services offered or the menu items and promoting the enter to win campaign. To, right. as a lead generation campaign. And, and window number two is the enter to win, the lead generation opt-in campaign, the enter to win campaign, maybe enter to win a year of free pizza or a free membership, one year a free membership to a fitness center or whatever it may be. The next window of opportunity is, is I call it, it's generally referred to as the friends, family, and fans open house. Now, the open house can be uh, held uh, the, the afternoon or the evening before opening day. Opening mm -hmm. day is the first day of business. That's when the now open phase begins. Uh, generally speaking, we prefer that this friends, family, and fans open house is kind of a closed kind of a closed event. And so if you're making pizza and, you know, it's a test for the equipment, test for the product, test for the employees. So if anything gets kind of messed up or, or something, everything is forgiven because they're friends and family and fans, right? So right. we like to on your have family. that. <laughs> Pardon me? Depending on how, you, how, how harsh your family is. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. <laughs> right. So we want to try to have that friends, family and fans open house, uh, probably the afternoon or the evening before opening day. And with that, with that particular event, you want to, or, or we will in, invite the Chamber of Commerce, uh, your construction people, your banker, uh, you know, people that have helped you get the business open. We also want to open. We also want to open it to the to the opt in, you know, folks, uh, the people that have opted in on the enter to win campaign, the people that are in your database. Yeah. As we said yesterday, generally we're going to have about a thousand or more people in that database of cell phone numbers and email addresses to work with, to invite. So you can invite all of them, or you can invite a portion of them, whatever you feel like doing. And of course, it's free food, uh, maybe some free wine or beer or drinks or, or whatever. You can have music. 
we, yep. if you're tying in with a charity, we want to have the executive director of the charity there to say a few words to kick off the fundraising. We also want it to be a fundraising event. And uh, of course, we want to have food bloggers. If it's a restaurant, we're going to have food bloggers there because they'll write favorable comments on social media or the newspaper or magazines. We also want to try to have social media influencers there at the open house. So it's a fun event. It's a great way to kick it, kick it off. We want to have a video there, a uh, live stream of video and, and to post that video on Facebook and Instagram and maybe Pinterest and some of these other uh, platforms. So the friends, family and fans open house is very important. One last comment yep. is that we want to give everyone that, that, that attends, we want to give everyone a 10 packets, maybe 10 envelopes with the menu of services or the food menu uh, with a special offer in there. Maybe it's buy one, get one free or 20, 25% off or whatever that may be, but give everyone 10 packets for them to take with them to distribute to their friends and neighbors and family and business associates to help spread that word. So it needs to be, it's a very important event that leads right into the opening day, uh, the now open, but the first day of the now open phase. So I want to ask you in talking about what you're saying, would you, or how do you feel about making it almost like an exclusive soft opening, if you want to call it that, where it's, how do you feel about being invite only? Like sometimes people feel special when it's like, hey, you're going to be invited to this soft opening or before the grand opening exclusive, you know. Good question. Uh, you know, uh, event for, Good for exclusively question. for exclusive guests like yourself. Right. That's the way we want to, that's the way we want to try to, uh, to uh, position this event. We want yeah. to be for a closed group. We want to be special people that we know, friends, family, and fans, open up. people that we know that want to see us succeed. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it needs to be a, kind of a closed event for sure. So um, we're talking about time frames, I guess, with this. So if you consider this, and I'm assuming you consider this more of a soft, so it's not the grand opening, but maybe it's a soft opening or soft launch. Would that be what you'd more frame it as? Well, the friends, family, and fans was, is going to be uh, the, the pre-opening, pre-opening day uh, type promotion. Okay. The, set, the, next, the next window of opportunity to really promote your business is opening day. Yeah. Opening day is critical. And then the next window of opportunity should be the grand opening. Grand opening should be 30 to 45 days after the business is actually opened. Okay. And uh, after that opening day, we want to make certain that the equipment is working properly and that the staff is trained and everything's really running, you know, you know, full tilt and providing world class customer service and products and services, so on and so forth. So we want to try to have that grand opening about 30 to 45 days after opening day. So. Uh, that that's the the next the last uh, window of opportunity to promote the business. But on opening day, now that should have with our program, they will have a store full of customers and a line out the door, and uh, and we you can see that on the photos that we provide on our marketing guide that that's free to the listeners. They can they can order, uh, they can request it, but. This, uh, this opening day is really important. We had an example of, we worked with that, had a client, Pollo Campero, mm -hmm. it's chicken, country chicken. Yep. And they're headquartered out of Guatemala City. And uh, we put together the marketing manual, the open, opening launch of Grand Open marketing manual for them and for their locations here in the States, United States. They had locations in Washington, D.C. and L.A. We worked with them on the location that opened in Chicago. I was there for that day, and now they gave away free samples. Now this is a this is a, a Latino type 
food and it's awesome just awesome the fried chicken it is just incredible mm -hmm. um they had they were giving away small samples but then anybody wanted anything beyond the small sample they had to purchase they had literally a store the store was jam-packed with customers and and they had a line at the parking lot and a block down the street people waiting to get in so wow. that's what we like to see you know it's exposure we've also had uh clients when we first start working with them i ask them about their opening day they say well we usually close early on opening day it's what do you mean you close early well the store's slow you know we open at 11 and the store's slow, you know, we don't have any customers. We usually close about, you know, three or four or five o'clock. Well, that's unheard of in yeah. our, in our world, that is unheard of, but that is life. And a lot of franchisees, that's, that's the, that's reality. And that's what happens. So we want to avoid that at all costs. That's for sure. We realize that there's a, there's a bit of an employee situation going on in the United States right now. We address that. What we can do, and sometimes what we have done uh, for opening day, is we will send, we will also make opening days. Sometimes we can make it like an invitation only, where maybe we will send out to the database, the enter to win, a year of free, you know, product or services. Uh, we will, to that database of a thousand, we might send out a text message, SMS text message or an email for reservations. If they want reserve, if they want to come have a free small meal uh, samples, they can come by, by a certain time period. And they'll have about 20 minutes seating. And so that's one way of, of managing the crowd uh, when you have a limited staff. So uh, yep. There's ways of working around each and all of these situations. Now, when you bring up this one particular franchise, you said it they, they uh, came in Chicago. They started up in Chicago. Well, they didn't start up in Chicago, but they had a location in Chicago. What do you, what did you learn about? Obviously they were pretty successful with the grand opening. They had a huge line, a lot of people. What do you think were the key takeaways that you learned from the process or the way they did things working with you that you found were, were really, really hit the target with them. They fought, they put, they put the money, the, the proper amount of budget for the pre-opening of this opening day, the pre-opening as we always recommend, you got to be aggressive, right. You know, during that pre-opening phase to, you know, create a demand for your product and your brand before you ever open the doors. Right. Uh, they followed the plan to the letter. I mean, they thought they did it exactly the way it was supposed to have been done. Of course, we implemented the, the plan. Yeah. They were open to implementing the plan. They had uh, the right budget and, uh, and it, it worked like clockwork. Uh, we worked great with their team and, uh, and uh, they just, they followed the plan as, as, as it was designed. And a lot of franchisees, they kind of want to go off on their own or they don't want to do this or they don't want to do that. Uh, certain elements of the plan that they don't want to follow because they feel that into what it won't work for them. This, these opening launch plans that we put together, they work, they right. work, uh, from each type of franchise to another, uh, if it's a home-based business or home repair business, or if it's a fitness center, automotive aftermarket, or fast casual food, follow the, each plan is designed for that particular industry, and it works. We've proven it over 30 years in the 6,000 franchisees we've worked with. Is so that a, the, key is that a, the, the key is the budget and following the plan. Right. So would you say were they were they pretty much on a four month prior to opening uh, pre planning stage for the marketing was it about four months? No, it's two months. It's oh, it generally months. about 60 days. Okay, before opening day, because you know, they been during that time period, the franchisee is busy with the build out and ordering right. the equipment. And, and working with the contractors in the city, getting city permits and hiring a staff and all that. So the franchisee is crazy busy. 
uh, with all of those activities. And the last thing that they need to be concerned about is you know the marketing and the advertising. And they're not the marketing and advertising experts anyway. So right. this relationship really works well. They focus on the build out, we focus on the marketing, and it all comes together for the friends, family, and fans open house. But like I said yesterday, that front window design and promoting the menu and the enter to win campaign, that lead generation campaign is absolutely critical, absolutely critical to the success of that, uh, of that business. So what one final question before we wrap up part two here is we talk about doing an enter to win free pizza, free membership for a year, whatever it is, free dessert. Um, but should that continue after the grand opening? And that's the biggest question. Do you just continue that, that contest uh, marketing plan throughout the opening and well into like a year later, or do you stop doing that at some point? That's a good, that's a good question. Um, the enter to win campaign, if it's a year free membership or whatever it is, you know, we're promoting that uh, with a 30 second video. Uh, yeah. on Facebook and Instagram and probably on Pinterest, uh, depends on the market. Uh, but we want to, uh, we want to, we want to promote that, of course, and with ad spend and, and, uh, and ad spend, uh, online spending, uh, we want to, we want to promote it uh, leading up to opening day. And we want to continue to promote it where we draw a winner on grand opening, the day of the grand opening. So right. when we have the ribbon cutting, uh, we will announce the winner. But after that, we probably want to shut it down for about maybe three weeks. Okay. Shut the, uh, the campaign down, the enter to win campaign, that lead generation campaign. We want to shut it down for about three weeks, give it a rest, and then recreate another enter to win campaign. Doesn't have to be giving away a free, a year of free services or food products or whatever, but uh, we want to continue with that. Maybe enter to win. We're going to have 10 winners for, you know, a hundred dollar, $25 Amazon gift card or whatever that, that prize is. We want to keep this lead generation program, this opt-in lead generation program going because we, if we have a thousand uh, opt-ins, for by the time they open and then another, you know, two or 300 during the now open phase and through, through the grand opening. So we'll have probably 15, 16, 1800 in that database. We want that. We want to continue building that database. We want to get that up to four or five or 6,000 in that database. So we want to continue with this enter to win campaign. Yeah, no, I love it. I agree 100%, John. So I might add, by the way, I might yeah. add one, one area that I'd like to address. You know, a lot of franchisees, so I'd like to tie in with a local charity. And I think it's a great idea. And I believe we should, a franchisee should always have at least one charity that they work with. Maybe it's a, a pet adoption center or something that's near and dear to, to the community's hearts, like something for children. Right. Um, and we want to have one or two, want to, want to partner with one or two charities. Now, the secret here, the secret in the sauce, as they say, we're tying it with a charity. We, we don't want to, and I will coordinate this. I, I will interview the charities and, and, uh, and evaluate them, so to speak. And I'll talk to them and screen them. Uh, and we do not want to tie in with charities that are just there with their hand out and wanting donations. We want them to be a partner. And right. what I mean by that is we want them to be an active partner where they post the partnership on their uh, social media and they post it and they promote it maybe on their website. And, you know, all of these charities have, you know, five, 10, you know, 15,000 donors and constituents. Oh, my Lord, all of those could be and should be your customers as well, the franchisees' right. customers as well with this new business. So what better way of promoting your business than with the donors and constituents and supporters of one or two charities in the community? And especially if that charity, if that executive director 
that I would coordinate with, uh, with for the franchisee, make certain that they make, th make things happen, that they participate in the friends, family, and open house, uh, and fans open house, and they participate on the opening day, and they participate on the grand opening. We want to have these three fundraisers for the charities or charity, and we want them to aggressively promote it to their donors to get all those folks in the door for opening day and grand opening. Yeah, I agree. It's a great idea to do that, especially for the, the community at large. So um, so let's wrap up part two. It's been very informative, John, as always. And I, I know you've I've asked you this before, but if you could please remind people of where they can contact you or find you online if they have questions about their own business. Uh, of course. Owners. Our website is impactmarketingservices.com. Take a look at our website. Um, they can email me at john, J-O-H-N, at impactmarketingservices.com and request our opening launch marketing program, uh, Marketing Guide. I'll be glad to send it, uh, send it to anyone requesting it. Uh, there's no obligation. There's no charge, of course. It's a, it's a, it's a gift that we want to, we want to provide uh, any franchisor or franchisee that uh, wants to have a very, very successful uh, opening launch and grand opening. My phone number is 602-318-3008. That's my cell phone. You can call me or send me a text. Great, John. Well, I'm looking forward to part three coming up soon. And um, let's keep in touch. Great, Ryan. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for listening to today's episode. If you're interested in becoming an episode sponsor, please email me at livingryan at gmail.com. And thank you so much.